How is a lack of fearing God affecting you? If we're afraid of God, we'll pull away. But if we fear God, we'll draw near. You say, John, that sounds counterintuitive. The reason it sounds counterintuitive is because the fear of God has nothing to do with being afraid of God. The fear of God is when we're actually terrified of being away from God. If you look at the men and women in Scripture and in the history of the church, the ones who walk closely with Jesus are those who feared him. When we understand the awe of God, everything changes. Everything changes. I don't have my table up here. My goodness. It's all good. Well, if you were here for last week's sermon, I closed hopefully trying to summarize all that being fed by a fire hose or drinking by a fire hose. A lot of information, a lot of scripture and whatnot. But I talked about the love of a father. I talked about my childhood and um, I said that I, I didn't have the greatest childhood. I look back and I, it wasn't bad. I don't want you guys to, you know, oh poor Pastor Bill, it's such a hard life. But, you know, everybody, like the shirt says, everybody goes through something. Everybody's going through something. And our family, just like anybody else, we all go through these things. But I talked about uh, my mom and dad arguing, my dad leaving, and how, oh, I wept. I'm like my dad, my hero, the one that taught me, you know, the one that I look up to, and he walked out. He came back. I just want you guys to know, he did come back. Um, but that fear, that anxiety of him leaving, you know, and then the guilt. What, did I do something wrong? Did I, you know. So another good example of this is uh, child separation anxiety. I'm sure as a parent, somebody's experienced that, right? Have to leave your, your kid at a daycare or something like that. And man, they're hanging on. No, don't leave me. That's the fear of God. And that's what we need to understand that this fear of God, because the word fear, right? Everybody's like, well, Pastor Bill's preaching on fear, but that only comes from Satan. It's a different kind of fear. It's the fear that we sin and we pull away from God, right? It's that fear that, that keeps us from sinning. That's why he said in that quote there about how the people that were closest to Jesus feared him the most, or the people that feared him the most were the closest to him. And you think about that because they didn't want to leave him, right? Anything they did that might separate them, that fear keeps them there. And it's not a bad thing. I don't want you guys to really under, misunderstand that. David says it, King David says it really, really well in uh, Psalms 51. He's confronted by the prophet uh, uh, Nathaniel, right? If I got my story right here. Right, about him sinning. I won't go into all the details there. Read Psalms 51. It'll help you understand the fear of God. It goes on, you know, he, he, he says, yes, I've sinned, I've sinned, I've sinned. And it boils down to Psalms 1511. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Think about that. Wow, that if we sin, what it does is it pulls us away from God. God doesn't leave. God doesn't leave, but our sin pushes him away, pushes us away from him. This is the fear of God that I'm talking about, that we're learning about. <clears throat> There's going to be a lot of questions again today. I want you to ponder on these and think about these. Renew your mind with these questions about how we are to go moving forward. Holy fear can be broken down into two major categories. To tremble at the presence of God, right? The fear of just knowing that he is just so awesome. And to tremble at his word, the word that we talk about, the word that we is, is preached in here. 
uh, in Psalms 89 through uh, 89.7. Now, I've used different verse and ver translations. I always say versions. Different translations because they explain it better. And I encourage you, when you're reading your Bible, I like the NIV, the New International Version. But sometimes other translations explain it a little bit better. So if you're reading and you don't really understand something, go to another translation. And, and hopefully you, it, you will understand it. And I found that a, a, a lot of these in King James Version really speaks it out. God is greatly to be feared in the assemblies of the saints. And to be held in reverence by all those around him. So if you think about that, the saints, right, fear him. And they fear him because they don't want to be separated from him. And we need to feel that same type of fear. <clears throat> when we come together for our worship service, what's our attitude in God's presence? Are we just kind of hanging back? Just kind of, oh, that sounds cool, right? Or are we truly worshiping God for the glory that he brings us, right? Think about those things. Why are we doing what we do? Notice in that verse, it says greatly feared. Not just feared, not just somewhat feared or whatever, but greatly feared, not just feared. God's wonderful presence shows up in an atmosphere of reverence and awe. Think about that. We talked about God's, we're not talking about God's omnipresent because God is always with us. Always, always, always. Right? So we're going to learn about that a little bit more about his manifestation actually feeling or seeing his presence. Yes, ma'am. Help me out, Nan, uh, Amy. Reverence. Right. Respect and worship. Uh, it's not... I'll talk to you afterwards. Right? And we can understand a little bit better. Right? So, we're not talking about his omnipresence. Because he's always with us. He's present everywhere we go. But his manifest manifestation, there's those big words again that your pastor struggles with. But it's all good. His manifestation's presence. That's when the Holy Spirit makes it known that he's moving among us. I've talked, I've shared my example some, uh, a few times about my brother passing and me holding guilt inside and hate and whatnot. And I, I always say that the Lord speaks to me in the shower. Right, he manifests. The Holy Spirit came to me and talked to me. And he's like, you need to let go of this. I, I've done all this for you. Look at it. And I always say to look at that through God's eyes. Look at it through God's lenses. What's going on here? Right? And if we surrender to that, he will manifest here. In John uh, 14, 21, he who has kept my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Think about that. Keeping his commandments, not sinning, he will manifest himself to us. Manif manifest means making it apparent, making it known that he is here. Right? We talk about omnipresence. He's always here. But this is almost like an interaction. He lets uh, oneself intimately know and understand of his presence. This occurs when God reveals himself to you, to our mind, via the Holy Spirit. Right, And the Holy Spirit dwells within us. It's like an awakening. Right, The Holy Spirit is always there. Always, always, always. Don't misunderstand that. He is always here. Right? And I don't know how to explain it. A dear friend of mine, Kathy, I said, when do you know? Right? And she says, Bill, I was taught you know when you know when you know. Right? Because my experience is not going to be the same experience as you. Some people say, oh, man, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I got goosebumps. Right? My heart started pounding. I don't know. I don't know how the Holy Spirit is going to manifest to you, but he will. He will, and he does. 
In Matthew 18, 20, for where there are two or three that are gathered together in my home, I am there in the midst of them. Right? So when, like when we pray, right, when there's more than one of us, there's two or three gathered, we know he's there. The Bible tells us he's there. Right? But if we truly surrender, open our minds, you will experience that manifestation. Right? It's, it's wonderful. <clears throat> now, our, our attitude, our mindset that we are, our posture, whenever we, wherever we gather for worship, some people raise their hands, some people stand up, some people just, and, right? Are you, or are you just kicking back and enjoying the show, right? Think about that. I'm not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent what you're doing. I just want you to think about, to be aware of what you're doing. And if you think about it that way, think about the world today. If you have a neighbor and you go up and you talk to them or you say hi to them and they're, and they're like, roll their eyes, oh, it's that bill again, right? And then they don't really want to give you the time of day because I'm not the best neighbor, right? But think about that. They're always there, right? Because they're my neighbors. Just like the Holy Spirit is always here, right? But if you nonchalantly just kind of, oh, yeah, you know, we're here to worship. Ooh, yeah, cool. Yep, you know. Do you think God is going to roll his eyes? Oh, they think they're worshiping again, right? <laughs> right? And then you're wondering, why doesn't he manifest himself to me? Right? It's not, I am not saying, I don't want you guys to under, misunderstand it. I am not saying he is not here. He is always here. He's omnipresent. But if you truly want to experience him, truly want to feel the light, the holiness in you, this is what we got to do. Uh, going a little bit off script here, that we, we learn... And how the presence of God, the awe of God, right? All the bright light, you know, angels, cherubs singing, all this stuff. And it's just this aweness. What would you do if Jesus walked through that door right now? Think about it. I didn't, want, didn't really need an answer. But think about that. We'd, oh, you know, drop ourselves to our knees, kind of like what Peter did. Or is he now... Uh, Simon, Simon is now Peter, right? He dropped to his knees, right? We think about that, but if he's here now, if he's here, there's more than two of us here, so he's here, but what are we doing? Right? We thinking about something else? Or are we showing reverence? Are we worshiping him? Are we lifting him up? Right? Think about that. Again, not expecting an answer, but I want you to understand all of this. So again, using your neighbor as an example that you knock on the door and they roll their eyes and it's like, oh, it's him again, right? Uh, would you continue to go to their house? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, that's right. So it's, there's no wrong answers here. But think about that. Yeah, would you want to keep going back to that house if, if, they're, if they're like that? So again, think about that as the Holy Spirit. He's here, but do you think he wants to manifest if he's not welcomed, if he's not reverenced, if he's not given all the glory? Think about that. It's tough. It's tough. Do you think the king of the universe would manifest his presence or speak in a place where he's not honored? No, you're right. He would not. That doesn't mean that he's not here, right? And when we sin, when we, put your label on it, when we sin, right, God doesn't leave us, but he doesn't manifest. Does that make sense, right? That means it's like, all right, you're on your own. You think you got this? Go for it, right? Just like a kid, sometimes you got to teach them. Sometimes they got to learn on their own. Man, I know that's going to hurt when they ride that bike. But they got to learn, right? Don't do this, don't do that. It's tough. So think about these questions here. Why do we come to church? 
Is it just a social club? Do we come just to chat? Oh, I haven't seen you all week. Blah, 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 blah. Is it to feel better? Do you feel better when you're in church? Do you come to just see your friends and families? Or do we come to worship the Almighty God and be touched by His presence? We do. We do. And we expect that. <clears throat> does it scare you away or does it make you feel close to Him when we talk about fear of God? That's a tough one, right? Again, this word fear, the, the world teaches us fear, right? No fear, no fear, no fear, right? Remember, the fear of God draws you close to him. Why does it draw you close to him? Because you don't want to be away from him. You don't want to be separated from him. The fear of, oh my God, he, he might let me on my own. He might, and then all his awesomeness, is no longer with me, right? We choose to do that, right? And I'm hoping to stir up the fear of God in you that you don't do these things. You listen to the commandments, right? You worship him. You come, you seek him. We will only find God's manifest presence in an atmosphere where he is held with the utmost respect. Think about that. Something else to remember after I turn my sticky page here. God does not wait for us to be right. Sometimes we might think, well, I'm not worthy, right? I need to get right before God will manifest, right? That's not true. God knows that we're sinners. God knows that we're going to fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's why he sent Jesus, right? In the story of the, the prodigal son, when the son is coming back, his dad doesn't wait for him to say, I'm sorry for doing what I did. He runs up, greets him with open arms because he knows he's coming back, right? So you don't have to make yourself right to come closer to God, right? But come closer to him. Come closer to him. Fear being away from him. It's not merely that, that the son changed his heart, uh, but the action of him coming home drew an, an enthusiastic embrace from his dad. So think about that. When we turn back, even though we've done wrong, we've sinned, just like David, he turned back to God, right? Fear that he may take his Holy Spirit from him, right? God, it's okay, David. I knew you were going to screw up, but here, let's now, let's move forward. Being in God's presence is crucial to the spiritual health of everyone, of every believer. If you find it difficult to enter God's presence in your time of prayer, just stop. Stop. Calmly. Let him come. Let him, you will be in his presence. He will manifest himself to you. And then pray. Pray to him. I challenge you to try this and experience it. I myself have experienced this. We all have our struggles. We all have our, I don't know, again, put a label on it. We all have our own struggles. Mine is different. Yours is different. Everybody's is different, right? But if you take the time, praise him, be quiet, be still. And he even tells us that. Be still and know that I am God. He will manifest to you. God is our Father who loves us deeply, but remember in Hebrews 12, 29, he is also the consuming fire. Hmm. That's a tough one, right? Many times in the New Testament when the Holy Spirit manifests the might of God and the power of God, it was awesome. Not just great, not just cool that he did this. It was awesome. The bottom line is where the Lord is reverenced, his presence manifests. Again, 
lifted high, holy, praised. And 1 Corinthians 2, 3 through 5, I come to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the diminishing of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might, be, might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Right? This is uh, Paul speaking, right? Again, he comes in weakness and in fear and trembling, letting us know about this. And if you ask about ourself, have I ever experienced the power of our God's presence? Has he ever manifest to me? I don't know. Think about that. How will my prayer life change by approaching him in holy awe? Right? Not just praying, oh, I need this, I need that, I want this, I want that. But in awe, lifting him up, praising him. Holy, holy is he. And how can I make this shift? How can I do that? Again, take the time and pause and present. Yes, Alice? Uh, how about at the end of service? Okay. Wonderful. I want, I'm so happy that you want to pray for people. All things are possible if we only believe and approach God with our holy or with holy fear. Our holy fear grows proportionally to our comprehension of God's greatness. The more we are in awe of Him, our holy fear grows. And that holy fear is the fear of being separated from him. It draws us closer because we're in awe of him. And we don't want to be out of his presence. Of course, no one can measure how great our God is because it's beyond our understanding. Right? Well, how great is our God? I dare anybody to try and put a word, a label on it. How can you do that? It's, it's beyond us. <clears throat> In Psalms 4, uh, 140, excuse me, in Psalms 145, 3, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. You just can't believe the awe. His glory is undescri uh, undescribable and no boundaries, no limitations, and is incomplete regardless. Oh, incomparable, regardless. We should seek and increase our understanding. Again, this is what we're doing. We're renewing our mind, understanding the fear of God. We're learning. We're coming closer to Him. Uh, you cannot have a conversation about holy fear without talking about the greatness of God. Again, if He wasn't great, would I fear Him leaving? Or fear of being away, being separated from him. He's awesome. The Hebrew word for glory, I think this is right, kabod, K-A-B-O-D, is defined as the weight of something, majesty and honor. <clears throat> the prophet uh, Habakkuk declares that it is a bright, that he is a bright and brilliant as the sunrise. The rays of Light flashed from him. His hands were awesome power. His awesome power is hidden. In Timothy, in 1 Timothy 6, 16, Paul writes that Jesus dwells in a unapproachable light whom no man can or has seen or can see. Again, it's, it's unfathomable that his presence, but yet he lives in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. Right? And he wants his light to shine in us. He wants that light to come out, to work through us. Think about this consuming fire. Think about the sun. But even the brightness of the sun falls short of the glory of God. How bright is our sun? Right? You can't even get close to it. It just consumes you. Right? You can't even describe God as that, that it's even more powerful than that. When you look at Isaiah in chapter 6, uh, the story of Isaiah, remember he went and stood before the glory of God. All right, everybody know that story? Yes, all right, good. Okay. You guys are awesome. Isaiah is in the, in the throne room and he doesn't, uh, 
He doesn't say, oh, look, there's a glory of God. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Right? What does he do? He cries out. I'm doomed. I'm a man of unclean lips. Right? He's afraid that what his unclean lips, that the fire will just consume him in the presence of God. That's the fear of God. But he cries out, no, I am doomed. I am a man of unclean lips. He says, woe is me, for I am undone in the presence of God. So before that, Isaiah thought he knew God and who God was. But after that experience, he became well aware of how holy God is. And the holy fear increased in him greatly. That he did not want to be separated from God. There are many accounts in Scripture of people experiencing God's glory, His holy glory, that they didn't even stand before it. They fell face down. <clears throat> it made Isaiah stand in awe as he writes later in chapter 40. You see him elevating the awesomeness of God. How awesome is he, giving him praise. Isaiah asks, who is able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? Who is enough to give him, who knows enough to give him advice and teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? To whom can you compare God? What image can we find to resemble God? I mean, how do you describe infinity? Infinitely infinite? Infinity, there we go, infinity, right? You can't, right? It's just a notch above. You just, you can't. And this was the awe that he experienced in the presence of God. <clears throat> this question needs to be pondered in our day-to-day -day time and our preoccupation of other information that the media, this world is coming out to us. Again, fear not, right? I think that was a logo here a while back. So we, we think about, well, we shouldn't, shouldn't be fearful. But the media and the world says it's okay. That's ah, okay, right? It's all right. Um, it's okay to sin. It's okay to do this. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's just a little sin, right? It doesn't matter. The Bible tells us that sin is sin is sin. And it separates us from God. Tough words, but we need to remember that. And again, society tries to teach us that it's okay. It's okay. Our development of holy fear has been hindered by our culture, our media, our social media, our phones, our business. Right? It's polluting our minds that all this sin is okay. And we don't need to fear God. Again, it's the definition. What does it mean to fear God? It's a separation of Him. The tragic reality is seeming harmless snippets. These little things. These little things. I think there's a old wise tale. How do you cook a frog? You put him in a pot of warm water and you slowly turn up the heat. Next thing you know it, you got frog legs, right? And that's the same way the world is. Just a little here, a little here, a little here. And next thing you know, you're being consumed by the fire. <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God, who said, let there be light in the darkness, he has made his light shine in our hearts so we, could be, so we would know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Again, he wants his light to shine. He wants it to shine through us. Christ came to forgive our sins, right? So we could have, can, have this relationship with our God through Jesus Christ. Everybody understand that? You remember the story when he died on the cross, right? The earth shook. The walls, temple walls trembled. The curtain tore, Right? The meaning behind that is because the holy priests were the only ones that could go back there and be in the manifest presence of God. 
right? And when Jesus died on that cross, all that was torn, all that was broken down. Why? Absolutely, because we now can have that relationship with him. <clears throat> In the stillness of our soul, in the union with the Holy Spirit, we can behold Jesus as the one we ponder God's word. <clears throat> we gaze into, into his face, and this illuminates God's glory in our hearts and causes the Holy Spirit's awe to level up. Right? Think about that. Again, the Holy Spirit dwells in each and every one of us. Right? Don't water it down. Don't ignore it. Don't say, eh, yeah, it's there. Right? We should all be thankful, the awe of that. We should give him the reverence that is deserved. We become like Isaiah and the other greats listed in the listed who encountered him, the who walked with him, who pleased him, received covenant promises, and finished well. Jesus is our new covenant. But I do not understand that. <clears throat> And the best of all, in beholding him, we are promised that to be made more and more like him. And we are changed into his glorious image. Remember, we are created in God's image. Amago Dei. We are created in his image. Right? Now, we may have fallen short. Right? We may not always be right. But we can always be renewed, right? Yes, Tony. Amen. I believe him too. Thank you for sharing. In Second Corinthians three eighteen. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory and being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Holy Spirit. Again, we're renewing our minds. We're coming closer to him. It's called sanctification, to be more and more Christ-like, to be to become the image that we were created in, right? We all fall short of that, right? We all pull ourselves away from God. This is the fear that should be generating in you when you sin or when you think about sin, when you think about doing immoral things, right? The fear of being separated from God when you do these things should rattle your cage. And it says, in trembling thoughts, Right? I tremble knowing these things. <clears throat> Whose image do you inspire to be? Right? The Bible tells us, again, we were created in the image of God. We should all strive to be more Christ-like. Um, the celebrities of our day All right, lost my track here. Hold on to me. Right. There we go. Do you want to be yeah, like more like the celebrities because man, it seems like they are taking over the media, right? That oh, I think this and I think that and I think this and it's 99% of the time it's usually immoral. I'm not saying that all celebrities are bad, but do you want to be like them? Or do you want to be like your creator? Absolutely. Let's listen to the song. <clears throat> if we have everybody in here. We don't have everybody in here. I'll talk some more. And can we sing this song before we do this song? If you know it, sing with me. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the things our hands have made, I see the stars, I Please. 
sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul.
Holy fear grows proportionally to our comprehension of God's greatness. You guys can be seated or stand, whatever, whatever the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. God's greatness, His glory, is everything that makes God God. Hmm, wrap your head around that. His characteristics, His authority, his power and wisdom. Literally, it's immeasurable the magnitude of our God. You know, we as Christians, we're going to be persecuted. He's going to, Satan's going to come after us. He is. The closer you get to God, the more he's going to send out the arson. Arson? Arsenal? And we need to be praying for one another. For his protection. We feel that a lot of times that God isn't with us because of these attacks. Well, God wouldn't let this happen. God wouldn't let this. God doesn't let anything happen that he knows that we cannot handle. But we have to lean on him. We have to turn and gaze on the face of God and have his spirit manifest. I don't know if you guys follow us on Facebook or not, but... Uh, trying to look at my notes here. <clears throat> Isaiah 51, 11, was it? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Think about that. Think about that. Because he is so awesome. He will protect us. We will have trials. We will have tribulations. Right? But fear God when you think about turning away. Right? That fear will draw you closer and closer to Him. And He will manifest Himself to you. It's His promise. It's, it's not Bill saying this. It's scriptural. He will do that. He will. He has with me. I pray that he does with you. I pray that it's not a desperate situation, but sometimes we have to be desperate before we turn to him. We don't have to be. That's a choice that we make. Father God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in each and every one of us. We stand in awe in front of you. We worship you. We give you reverence. We ask your help because we are weak. is here and we're thankful for that God you are awesome and we love you 
We're thankful for Jesus that we have this opportunity to have a relationship with you. How awesome is that? We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Absolutely, Alice, let's pray. Thank you, Alice. Wonderful. Hey, for some of us that are late, <laughs> not throwing anybody under the bus, <laughs> but hey, we're going to have this birthday celebration. I think Nancy, Nancy's got some stuff going on there. The first Saturday of every month, we're going to start doing this new tradition. Uh, and if we don't know your birthday, your name will not be on the cake. But you Again, can still eat it. You just won't have a name on it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's such such a thing. Uh, also, the the DCC women are having their tea. Remember on Saturday uh, at noon. Uh, yeah, twelve to three. Hey, check it out. If you want some tea, you, I, I I don't think you have to have your pinky out when you drink, but it's it's you know, you must if you must. Yes, it, it's not a prerequisite. That's for sure. Yes, and again, uh, we have a guest speaker next Saturday, Nehemiah. Come, bring a friend. Man, if you want to yeah, experience so the awesomeness of God when this man sings, he'll, he, he makes the lights rattle, let me tell you. Not that our guys don't, but uh, it's, it'll be a wonderful experience. It'll be a treat. It'll be a treat. Um, something I was going to say that I forgot to at the beginning of my sermon, because I didn't want to outshine Nancy, <laughs> is that uh, you guys heard of the, the monkey pox and all that stuff, right? That's been going around. Well, evidently... There's something else going around. It's called the peekaboo virus. Peekaboo virus? Is that what's going around? She's already laughing. And if you're not careful, you'll end up in the ICU. Oh, my God. Peekaboo, ICU. Okay, I got it. <laughs> there you go. Guys, there's Look. cake and food back there Yes, now. there's cake and food back there. Everybody come back. Come Have a wonderful in, fellowship. God bless you all. Thank you.